by Town Pump. Fueling your next outdoor adventure is also brought to you by Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild. Montana Army Navy, get it, get out, and live it. McKenzie River Pizza, the best pie in the big sky. Bob Ward's, everything outdoors, Montana style. Glacier Real Estate, your real estate connection to Northwest Montana. And the Outdoor Report is provided by Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Big Sky Outdoors. I'm Matt Redding, and today we're on the gorgeous Smith River in central Montana. We're traveling with the Isinger and the Martin family. We're gonna be out camping for several nights, enjoying this beautiful country. We're gonna be doing some hiking. We're gonna be talking about some new food storage regulations and just having a great time, so stay tuned. The Smith River is significant because it's, it is one of the, well, it is the only permitted river in the state of Montana, meaning that, that it's required to you know, apply uh, for a permit in a random drawing. Everybody excited? Um, it is also one of the few rivers in the state of Montana that you can actually uh, conduct a multi-day river trip, uh, meaning you can stay multiple nights and multiple days. The process, once somebody actually draws a permit, so once somebody arrives at Camp Baker, they can either arrive the day of their float, or oftentimes people will arrive at the Camp Baker put in the day before their float. It's just kind of a, you know, getting set up, getting staged, kind of getting their gear and their equipment ready and, and meeting their, the rest of the group that they're floating with. One of the first things they'll do is they'll sign in. Uh, the registration will include the name and state of residence of all the floaters, the number of boats, how many days they're doing, but also um, designating boat camp. That's the river. So you guys are going to Lower Scotty Allen, river left there. Um, and, then it, and then there's a short uh, safety orientation talk that the river rangers will get. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Nate. I work with uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Uh, I'm a ranger here on the Smith. Travel and camp on durable surfaces within the camps. You know, the best spots for your kitchen, for your tents have been used for 30 years. Just stick to those hardened, uh, established areas and we should be good. Once that process is all done, uh, then the, the groups are, you know, they're, they're free to launch at any time they're ready. Everybody Thank you. have a safe, fun trip, and uh, hopefully we'll see everybody next year. Thank you. The typical float season starts in April. Um, usually early to mid-April is when, when we see some of our first floaters. Um, and then just due to Mother Nature, usually the, the, the end of the float season is right around about the third week of July. And that obviously can vary depending on, on the type of snowpack we had and what kind of uh, summer and spring we've had as far as rainfall. You know, there are some pretty incredible cultural resources on the Smith River, a lot of them being uh, historic or prehistoric cultural resources. And the, and the main ones that people can actually view or see are, are what are called pictographs, which are, are paintings on the rock walls. So look right up there. See on that kind of yellowish portion of the rock, you can see some reddish. We're going to get there a little bit closer, and there are some handprints up against the wall that are red. Yeah, I see them. Do you see them? Yeah. yeah. You know, some of the ones that are, that are pretty accessible and, and, and visible uh, include some handprints um, that are just below Tenderfoot Creek on, on river left. You can see those just right as you're floating by them. They're up probably 15, 20 feet off, off the river. Come on, come on. Look how cool that is. Let's see it move. I would love to know the story behind those. I don't know. As the manager and as a former river ranger on the Smith River, personally, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a special place. It's just one of those places where you can kind of, you can get back to nature. Um, it's, uh, you know, floating rivers is, is one of those experiences versus backpacking where it's not quite as strenuous. You can kind of relax and enjoy yourself and not have to work really too hard um, to enjoy yourself on a river trip. And you can take some of those, those amenities that you wouldn't necessarily do on, on, a, on a backcountry trip where you're on foot or even horseback for that matter. For about the last five years, the actual number of applicants has been increasing. So we've, uh, for example, this year we exceeded over 9,000 applicants for the first time. Uh, last year it was 8,000 for the first time. Uh, roughly we give out about 1,000 permits. It's because of, of the dynamics of the Smith River and the complexity of, of managing a permit system and such an incredible resource. Um, I just really enjoy and love the challenges that that, that brings. Big 
Big Sky Outdoors is brought to you locally by your Montana Honda dealers and by Parkside Credit Union. Since 1953, Town Pump has proudly served our communities as Montana's best convenience store. Town Pump offers a huge selection on all your favorite products, and we're always expanding to meet your needs. This month's specials include Mission Mountain Huckleberry Wine is only $7.99, Apothic Wine just $8.99, Sutter Home Wine is also only $8.99, and Woodbridge is $9.99. Town Pump is here to serve your community, so come visit Montana's best convenience store today. Glacier Real Estate understands why you live, work, and play in Northwest Montana. Let Tim Gravel and Kenyon Matheson help you buy or sell your next piece of the Montana dream. Call Tim or Kenyon of Glacier Real Estate today. Historically, I think the fishing was one of the main draws for the Smith River. It is, a, it is a very good trout fishery. Some of the other aspects of the Smith River are just the, the sheer beauty of the, of the scenery in, in the Smith River, that, that incredible, gorgeous limestone canyon. So this section of river right here is really classic of the Smith and really kind of what we're targeting for this fish. You've got a nice little ripple like this coming down into a fairly deep little pool. You've got this great bubble line that feeds right on the edge of it, and that's where all the fish are just hanging, is right there on the edge of that bubble line. And they're either taking the streamer, if you throw it right into that main little backflow area, or also with the nymph set up, they seem to be right there on that bubble line, ready to take it. All I'm trying to do here is just high stick these fish. They're in just a tight little uh, foam pool, if you will. And they're just eating these little itty bitty tiny midges. There we go. There's a fish. Just like that. Rainbow. Oh, there he went. Fair enough. I like that kind of release. That's perfect. Good little rainbow to get. Get the monkey off the back. Let's get you another one. Brand new this year was uh, we implemented uh, a mandatory food storage regulation. Groups are required to comply with the food storage regulation, which uh, basically says that any type of equipment, including you know, portable electric fences or uh, specific coolers or and or dry boxes that have been approved, um, if you have one or more of those, those types of products, including hanging, is allowed, um, you'll be in, in compliant with the food storage regulation. And there are lots of different ways you can store your food, but what we decided to do on this particular trip is we took along a counter assault uh, bare electrical fence. And it's really simple and easy to use. It gives you a large area that you can use for storing your food, your cooking equipment, anything that might have food odors on it. There's really only three or four main components to this electrical fence. First and foremost would be the electric fence itself along with its six uh, electrical rods. Then we have the energizer here. It's basically just powered by your regular D-cell batteries. There's also a quick little tester, so you don't have to actually touch the fence itself to find out if it's working, as well as a grounding rod to bring the full cycle of electricity throughout the fence. So let's go ahead and put it together and show you how it's done. There are six posts to this electrical fence, one through six. And you want to start with the first one, obviously, on the end here. You want each individual post to be about 10 feet away from the center of the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. 
where posts one and six meet together. This is basically going to be your door to go in and out of the bare fence enclosure. And Countersalt has supplied three Velcro strips in order to secure the door or the entrance of the bare fence. To electrify the fence, we have the Energizer here. On the Energizer, there's a couple different settings, and what you want to do is set that setting to number two. Connect the yellow wire to the top of the Energizer. Place the energizer and the ground rod inside the bare electrical fence. To energize it, it's just to simply click the yellow wire to that tab right there. And clip the green wire to the grounding rod. And that's basically it right there. Real simple, easy. You've got a lot of area, almost 200 square feet to use. You can put coolers in, your backpacks your cooking equipment, anything like that that might have odor or that you're concerned about that the bear might be attracted to. It's real simple and easy, it doesn't weigh that much, it's easily packable in your raft. And that's it. And there's a couple different ways you can test it. You can either grab onto the fence and see if it gives you a good little shock, which it will, or Counter Salt also supplies a quick little tester for you. So yeah, go check it out. They're all over the place in different outlets throughout the state of Montana and in the inland northwest for that matter and they retail for just under $300. So it's a good investment and it keeps you and your food safe. Can you take a wow, it's a nice bear. So as you can see, we just saw a bear uh, traversing the bank over here. So it's a good thing that we're take the necessary precautions that we need to with the bear fence and the kind of thing that we're going to need to do uh, to keep those bears out of our camp. Counter Assault was developed, made, and scientifically tested at the University of Montana, and we are proudly celebrating our 30th anniversary. Counter Assault is what I chose for my staff based on my personal experience, scientific testing, and it's the only one that met all the expert recommendations. Spray time and spray distance are important in a bear attack, and Counter Assault has both. As an avid hiker, hunter, and outdoorsman, Counter Assault is my first line of defense in bear country. Carry what the professionals carry. Counter Assault. Grizzly Tough Bear Spray. Look for the red can. In the big sky country, you have some big road trips, and nothing's better than being behind the wheel of a Honda with real-time all-wheel drive. We are Honda HRV Pilot and CRV keep you safe with Honda Lane Watch and connected with Honda Link. For all the things you're into, an all wheel drive CRV can be yours for only $219 a month, making it the perfect ride for Montana. See your Montana Honda dealer today. Get it, get out, and live it. Army Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. Get it, get out. Get out and live it. Well, the Smith River has meant a number of things for a while. Floated and guided the Smith for 20, 21 years. It has been the source of an enormous amount of pleasure just because it's spectacular. It's a place I've spent a lot of fun times with a lot of wonderful people. And I've got memories there going back almost 40 years. So um, it's an important place for a lot of people, including me. I've probably floated the Smith River 25 times. I've been on the Smith River 12 times, actually. Two times. 11 times. It is a place that is so full of mystery and beauty. Every time you go down the Smith, is like the first time. We would sit out in our camping chairs on the beach and watch the sunset. It was like, it was really pretty. The next morning I got up at five and hiked in the dark to the top of the cliffs and watched the moon set opposite Sunset Cliff. Probably my favorite memory is the first year we were on the river. Uh, my kids were four and seven. It poured down rain the whole trip. They got to the end of the river and said, we want to go again. As soon as I close my eyes, I can feel that feeling of when you lift your oars up and the boat just kind of floats just a little bit. 
I like rowing the boat, even though I'm not great at it. To me, the Smith is on the same level as Yellowstone Park or Glacier Park. I think it's that special a place. As most people by now know, the, <clears throat> the Smith is under the gun from uh, a potential mine being developed in Sheep Creek, which is one of the major tributaries to the Smith. A mine in the headwater tribs of the Smith where spawning takes place. Uh, could devastate the river, and you and I will be cleaning the place up in perpetuity. And that's a long time, that's forever. We've seen deer cross the river right in front of our boat. We've seen eagles come down and grab fish. Our days on the Smith when the fishing is, is at its best are days that blur in your memory because it's so unbelievable. I've never caught as many fish in a day as I have on a Smith River trip. There are fields of wildflowers. There's beautiful rock cliffs with pictographs. It's not until you're, you're floating along that rock wall two feet from it and you look straight up leaning back in your raft that you realize the grandeur of it. I spent 40 years as a consulting biologist. Uh, we worked on a number of mine projects, both in permitting and remediation. So I'm very familiar with what can go wrong when things go wrong with a hard rock mine. I floated right along the cliff walls and I looked up river as much as down. It turned out to be one of the most memorable trips I ever had and I never put a fly in the water. I've been looking at those cliffs for the better part of my life now, and I still see something new every time I look. Yes, yeah, streams are resilient, but you and I will be paying to clean that up long after a sand fire and the Canadian involvement is done and they take their money and run. It's pretty simple. We wouldn't have uh, generations of family farms and ranches without that river. It's a lifeblood. It's a, a family adventure, and so it really, to me, is representative family or friends who become family. I brought up my son uh, going down the Smith nearly every year from his fourth birthday, and he's a guide on the Smith now. I can't describe it. I can only see it in my mind, and it's, it's one of my fantastic memories. There are two basic places that people can look at on their computers to get involved in this process. One is the Montana Environmental Information Center website, MEIC, and the other is Montana Trout Unlimited. Both groups are working with other groups as well to do what they can to stop this mine. Glacier Real Estate understands why you live, work, and play in Northwest Montana, that Tim Gravel and Kenyon Matheson help you buy or sell your next piece of the Montana dream. Call Tim or Kenyon of Glacier Real Estate today. Here's this week's outdoor report by our friends at Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Looks like it's a rainbow. Whoop, oh, he's up. Burn Sundell loves trout. Browns are my favorite. Of course, I won't turn down any trout. This avid fly fisherman, fly tire, and artist has been able to make a life out of Montana's trout. When I come to painting these trout, it's just one subject matter that I've just stayed with for a long time. The longer I stay with it, the more people seem to know who I am. For artists looking to make a living, fly fishing is a good industry to get into. It's painting uh, has lots of different products, you know, that goes into the mugs and fly boxes and cards and prints and reels and all kinds of different things. So 
when I do a painting that just echoes for years. An advantage of being a trout artist in Montana is having world-renowned fly fishing destinations right out the front door. People come from all over the world to visit tennis and fish over here and go to the Yellowstone Park, so my paintings go all kinds of unusual places. And while Burns' painting and gallery keep him pretty busy, he plans yeah. to find more time this summer for fishing. Yeah. My wife and I just decided, you know, we're just going to fish a little bit more and do a little more on-stream research. <laughs> I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. So in this section of the canyon, we're about at mile 16 or so. A couple of really pretty campsites just right off the side. It's on Forest Service land. Uh, it's called Canyon Dip. It's got these fantastic and beautiful cliffs that you're camping right below. And I think it's one of the more scenic spots on this river, at least for camping anyway. Well, for folks who've never done, never done the Smith River, you know, it is, for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's a bucket list item that, that people want to want to experience it. Just word of the mouth that they hear about, you know, the spectacular River Canyon, how gorgeous it is, the fishing. Fish of the trip. All the incredible things that you can, you can see and experience on the Smith River. It, it is truly uh, a gem of the Montana State Park System and that there's a lot of people that really want to experience it. And it's one of those places where the other things that are important come to life. You sit down and have a, an, an evening around the campfire with your buddies. You can talk about all the old good times that didn't really happen. You can talk about the big fish that got away. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful place for a lot of people in Montana to get away for up to five days at a whack and it's hard to beat. Thanks for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors on the beautiful Smith River. If you want to apply for a permit for this river, make sure that you do it early, like in the month of February. That's when they're doing all the drawings. And if you want any more information about it, go to fwp.mt.gov for more information. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors. We'll see you next time.